right, it's about time to get started. So uh, with that, we've got some birthdays. Um, I missed the birthdays last week. Uh, Kyle Heiner, um, April 20th, he is my age. Yes, God works in mysterious ways. Yes, everybody's saying hi to my mom. Cindy Vance. Cindy Vance is coming up. Um, Kyle Heiner is 56 today because I know he's the same age as me. Cindy Vance. Um, she is, uh, I'm not going to say her age, but her birthday is the 29th. Cheyenne McGuire, April 30th. And uh, May 1. We're already getting into May. Getting into May. So, I'm trying to see if there's any other comments. Fred Scoobel. I don't know how old he's turning, but we're going to sing our happy birthday song, all right? So, yes, everybody's congratulating everybody for their birthdays, okay? And our birthday song. And, uh, and like I said, um, Rolf... Odendale and Becky Remington and Ginger and I think I think um, even Savannah McGuire might have had some input in in some of these songs today uh, and I, I think I played my trumpet with it too <laughs> so let's sing the birthday song here we go should be able to follow the words on the screen right here we go happy birthday May the good Lord bless and keep you as you start another year. May you ever feel His presence and the warmth of Jesus near. May each birthday friend be and keep you till we meet on yonder shore. Yay! Happy birthday. And that's not all. That's not all. We also, we also have an anniversary. Monty and Joy celebrated two days ago their 38 year anniversary. That's awesome. They're they're just they're ahead of Cat and I by about seven months. So thirty eight years. Congratulations. Applause to to you too. Hey Sue, how's your knee doing? Sue had uh, knee surgery recently. Yes, congratulations to you. Very much so. So and we have some continued prayer needs. Um, I'm gonna I got a I got a pen and paper so we can. We can um, write them down, but I also have uh, my bulletin that uh, has the, the prayer needs on them. Um, Vale Blessing, he's uh, in Sterling Hospital right now with a hip replacement. He's also got uh, dementia, and his, his wife, Dorothy, is not able to visit him uh, other than calls because of this COVID-19. So um, just uh, pray for Vale and his recovery um, and that he gets to be home with his wife here pretty soon. Uh, Anna and Dale Lopez, um, they, they did, were able to go home. They did lose their son who was 24 years old last week. Um, I'm, I'm a pastor. Yes, they, they, they lost their son. Do we, do we have any other? Yes, good morning. Um, if you have any other prayer requests, we can write them down. So, and, and, I, and during this time, as, as, we, uh, as we list them, I, I, we're, 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 bringing them, we're bringing them up to the Lord. So he, this is our prayer time. Um, so as we pray, we'll pray for them. Anna and Dale Lopez, they, they made it home. They lost their son of 24 to the coronavirus um, other, other losses are the Dutton family, the McCaleb family, and uh, the Stickley family, um, my, my nephew. And, uh, oh, Sue Remington did not have knee surgery. She had eye surgery. 
and uh, she's doing much better. Anna, Anna passed, no, did Anna pass away? Anna passed away today, oh no. Yeah. So, so, so we have, we have another, um, another loss. Anna, she did have a lung transplant um, and uh, so she was really risky. We were praying for her. Uh, they did send her home, but uh, now she's passed away from the coronavirus. Yes, yeah, so uh, gonna pray for that. I'm gonna update that, Anna. The Lopez family, definitely. Okay, Mike McCaleb had knee surgery. I'm sure he's doing better. Rebecca, she's got cancer. She's uh, going through her third round of chemotherapy. Um, she's, she's young, she has uh, two young kids and keep the McCaleb's in your family. <laughs> Um, Mike McCaleb had knee surgery. His truck also burnt up last week. So when it rains, it pours. They also lost their, their parents. Um, had one eye done, waiting for the other eye. Yes, we'll, we'll pray for the next one. Your aunt saw is with COVID. My aunt was diagnosed with COVID, doing better. Laverna, your aunt Laverna had COVID. Okay. Um, cats, cats work. Um, they tested 500 inmates at about 300 of those tests came back and 200 of those are positive. So there's all kinds of, uh, they, they, they were infested there. Um, cat is still under quarantine. Uh, and, uh, she got tested just recently. Her tests have not come back, uh, yet, uh, and uh, one of her coworkers and, and a, a renter from one of my houses, he, he's been sick for the last four days, actually bedridden, has not been able to get tested for COVID, um, but uh, he, I think he's starting to see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, um, getting a little bit better, okay? Cancer, uh, Jerry Larson, Ruby and Claude Rinker, COPD, Vicki Larson, and uh, Justin Bollinger with Frederick's Axtasia and, uh, and Sam Rambat with complications of, of uh, Steven Johnson syndrome. So am I missing any prayer requests here? Good morning, Carol. Yes, good morning, Georgia. Okay, I think, I think we're all caught up on prayer requests. So during this time, it, as 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 we uh, bring these these needs up and as we list them, um, I I just want to make sure that that we know that that God is listening and He's participating in this service today. Uh, we also have some outreaches. Buccaneers would have had their last meeting, their award ceremony this last Wednesday, but we were closed. The prison ministries, uh, youth group, all those things. Uh, VBS worship team. Um, lots of these things have been shut down and uh, we're, we're working um, in missing them, missing our church services. We have uh, missionaries, uh, lift up Aaron Heiner, he's, he's back home. Uh, Nate and Donna, uh, Nat and Donna, Ben and Charity Kibbe to uh, Thailand and Sean and Christina up in Slovenia. So we'll just take this time and uh, Remember these that we've just mentioned, um, and uh, maybe you've got some some ones at your home that that you haven't listed. The Lord knows everything, and so we're just going to lift them up and and uh, take this time to just uh, just bring God into us and welcome Him uh, during this time. All right, let's let's pray. Lord God, we just asked that you join us here today, that uh, as we join together on this internet, uh, through this media, Lord, I just pray that uh, we're gathered uh, and that you're in our midst. And Lord, as we lift up these concerns, these losses, Lord, we also remember your blessings 
and you've blessed us with so many spiritual blessings. And we have a hope that reaches beyond any trouble in this world. Lord, help us to reach in behind and through the veil to that hope that is firm and secure like an anchor for the soul. Lord, and help us to share this blessing with those that are around us and knowing that this temporary life, what is seen is temporary, what is unseen is eternal. And you have an eternal blessing waiting for each of us. And you have it open for us, for us to choose you. Lord, help us to see today, open our eyes today. We all have a little bit of blindness. And Lord, I just pray that uh, some of that blindness is taken away so we can see your glory, to see your surprises, to see your mystery that's waiting for us. We just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So I think we're all, all caught up here. So good to see you all. We're going we're gonna to do this song. This is the day. I love the way our worship team uh, put this together. And uh, the words are on the TV behind my head. And I hope you guys sing along and uh, participate in this. This is the day. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We're gonna sing it again. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. All right, we have a promise of the week. And the promise out of the week is out of Galatians 5.5. 5. But by faith, we eagerly await through the Spirit the righteousness for which we hope. The righteousness for which we hope. You know, uh, the, the word of the week is patience. And sometimes, uh, you know, we say, ah, me righteous? Me righteous? Hey, what, what God has begun, he will finish. He's going to complete it in the day of Jesus Christ. But we wait for it with patience. And uh, so I just pray that uh, as, as uh, we remember this week, patiently await the righteousness through the Spirit this week. All right. The next song we're going to sing is Whispering Hope. And I uh, love this song. Love this song. We have a hope. We have a hope for righteousness. We have a hope in the future. Even in these times, even in these dark times, we have a wonderful hope. And I pray that every one of you hears that gentle whisper.
shower is gone. Whispering, whispering on, oh how welcome my voice, making my heart in its sorrow rejoice. Worship team is putting this together, and I hope you can recognize some of this from the, some of the people singing in there. Uh, Becky's voice, uh, Rolf's voice, the guitar, the bass. Uh, I did not play the trumpet with that one. So, um, if if you want to hear the those songs a little bit better quality, not so much on the TV with some screens. Uh, you can visit uh, YouTube, and I've, I've put all the songs of today on YouTube, including the birthday song. So if you want to go to my YouTube at Peter Tell, you can find it there. But today, today um, we are going into the mystery. The mystery. Again, the same title as last week. A little, little further into it. And... Uh, um, let me set this all the way to the start of the sermon. Oh, we almost finished the sermon. But, but uh, I just want to say good morning to you all, no matter where you're at. Good morning. Uh, it's been five weeks. Five weeks. And I just, I just want to say welcome, y'all. Greetings to you all. I'm going to try not to pay too much attention to the comments. Uh, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just trying to stay focused because it's... Uh, it's really hard for this guy to stay focused, especially uh, with with three three broadcasts going on at the same time, and uh, and and trying to uh, get this thing going. So if I do muddle up, I, I know there's forgiveness. But uh, thank you for joining, and uh, uh, you guys are all so important. And and 
I hope that this message is not just from me to you, but uh, from, from God to you. God has a special message for you, and I hope that he surprises you today, surprises you today. Um, I lost track of time last week. Last week, um, last week, I thought Saturday was Friday, and I already had plans in the morning, set my alarm to go, to go for my run and my, my jog in the morning, and, uh, and then my wife goes, you know, tomorrow's Sunday. And I go, no, no, it's Friday. I had to look at my phone and say, oh, you're right. And uh, so I was scrambling. But, but, you know, I've been watching videos of local people singing and preaching. Um, you know, wow. You know, last night, last night I had a dream. I had a dream that our worship team met together in the church. There was less than 10 and they, they met together and they stayed six feet apart, social distancing. And they was, they was playing, but they, the word got out. And uh, pretty soon people started filing in the church, just, just looking and, and getting into the worship team. And, and pretty soon everybody's shoulder to shoulder and everybody's just, I mean, it is, it is just lit. The place is lit. And I'm sitting there watching this and I'm going, oh no, you know, what's going to happen? You know, and uh, you know, we've got, we've got people packed in that place, you know, and not anymore people could fit in that place. And we're just having a great old time. And, and, uh, and I didn't even have my sermon going. Yeah, it was, it was a, it was a great dream. And, and also I was so preoccupied with watching my sermons. This is, I, I don't know. I was sitting there detached from all this. Uh, and my friends that I missed preaching myself. I didn't even get my message out, you know, but they had a great time without me, you know. So if I don't, if I don't show up next week, right? If I don't show up next week on time or whatever, somebody give me a call, okay? Because I might lose track of time. I might be preoccupied. So, but, but there's some real encouragers out there on social media. Um, from farther away, my cousin from Mission, BC, who likes to bike and is broadcasting his church service. I, I, my, my friend from Munden, Kansas, he's, he's watching today. Um, but uh, um, my buddy, my running buddy from Arizona, um, my, my friend from Cope, right? My previous churches from Eatonville and Spokane, Washington, they're, they're all filling my viewing with encouragement. I don't have to watch all the advertisements for Corona and, and all the warnings. You know, everybody knows to wash their hands and touch each other and keep your not six, six feet distancing. We don't know all that stuff. But about the Bible, there's, there's so much that we could learn from our friends and our neighbors that, that are posting on social media. And I, I just want you to encourage you to fill some of that time, if you're having time, to, to do that. Uh, my previous churches, are, are, I, I get preoccupied with watching. I'm sure you all might have broadcasts that, yes, good morning, y'all, broadcasts that have brought these times some encouragement. You know, where there's tragedy, yes, there's tragedy, there's hope. And it overwhelms the negative. There's no negative. There's no negative that can separate us from God's love. No corona, no cancer, not even death. Let's, let's turn to Ephesians uh, 2, 11. You know, keep praying that God uses these days to wake up this world to life. Death brings life. You know, the daily world death rate is leveling out. Instead of multiplying, we are even seeing a drop in daily deaths. And, and uh, we can see that from, from the um, thing. But I'm going to go ahead and, and go on the Internet. And, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll look at the, the, it today. And you can see... That, that today, you, it's not going up anymore. It's not spiking up anymore. In fact, we haven't, uh, we haven't reached our high of 838,341 for, uh, for quite a while. So far, the total death rate is 203. That's the, accurate, that's the, that's the, um, the count, 203,000. 
324 deaths so far. And okay, so I, I got a little bit of uh, corona in there, but uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll move on. We'll move on, right? Death brings life. You know, I'm still thinking about the resurrection of Jesus. You know, how it was prophesied, how the very date that Jesus would be cut off was prophesied. And, uh, you know, it was all over through Scripture. Um, Jesus said, you search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But it is they that speak of me. Yes, they speak of me. You go through the Scriptures and it talks about, as Jesus was walking with Cleopas and his friend on the way to Emmaus in Luke 24... Jesus explained, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself, that all the events of his death were part of the plan. They were part of the plan that God instilled before the beginning of the foundations of the world. Uh, without this plan, death would be permanent. But Jesus proved death. Jesus conquered death. Jesus rose as the first fruit of resurrection and made life available to all who are dead. Um, it was the only way. It is the only way. You, you know, I might, not, might say, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm not dead yet. Let me get this back on. Um, why are you talking about people being dead? Well, death is separation. You know, last week, uh, we, we read out of Ephesians 3, you know, about the mystery being Gentiles and Israel being heirs together, members of one body. I mean, that was unheard of. That was, that was a mystery. Um, members of one body and sharers together in the promise of Christ Jesus. This was huge and a hidden in the Old Testament. We were outsiders. We were considered as dogs. We were without hope. The Gentiles, we were. And God had a secret. They, they had, the Jews had to, had to abstain from us Gentiles because we were really, really bad influences. But uh, we're going to backtrack from Ephesians 3 where it says the two became one. And we're going to start where the two were not one and uh, where, where it all came to. So uh, remember that you were at one time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn to that passage. We're gonna get to that here pretty soon. And... Uh, we're going to read that passage, Ephesians 2.11, that we just, just read that. Gentiles by birth who are called uncircumcision by those who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenant of promise, without hope and without God in this world. That's, that's pretty pretty sad. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself, one new man out of the two, thus making peace. So that was his purpose. And in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. Death brings life. I told you, death brings life. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow, fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. 
And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. May God add the blessings. We're going to turn to Daniel 9, 26. You know, last week we looked at the mystery reading from Ephesians 3. And let me switch this over. <laughs> A lot of things going on here. Um, and we could see that there's a mystery there's a mystery. The Old Testament believer, such as Isaiah and the prophets, they could see the first coming of Christ and, and they, they put them together. The first coming and the Messiah and the second coming of Christ where he reigns and rules. They, they didn't see the cross and, and much difference in time frame. But there's that valley, the church age, the unseen valley. So we're, we're, we're still in that mystery here today as we look at uh, the the Ephesians 3 and 2. There's a gap that Daniel or the prophets left open as to what God's program would be in between the anointed one being cut off and the Jewish time clock unpausing. Ezra and Nehemiah were Israelite purists. Okay, remember last week when we read out of Ezra, Ezra was pulling out his hair because the Jews, the Israelites were intermingling with the Gentiles, okay? It lists several different countries out there. And basically, they repented and they got rid of their foreign wives and, and uh, spouses. And, and this was huge to try to, you know, it's almost racist, okay? Then Nehemiah, he, he, maybe he's a little bit different. And we, we got into Nehemiah. And Nehemiah, he doesn't pull out his own hair. Maybe he was bald like me. But he goes around <laughs> pulling out the people's hair that were intermingling. So Israel basically was, was purifying itself. They, they, abstinence. They, they, they had to stay away from us Gentiles because we were a bad influence. Um, and, and we were throughout all of Israel. Um, from the time they got put into their land... They, they kept falling away. They kept going to, to, the, to the local people's idols and gods. And then, and then they, would, they, would, they would fall and they would become, they would become uh, slaves or they would have famines and stuff. And then they'd fall on their face and then you'd return back to God. And then, then after a while, they would fall back. And, you know, it was a big cycle. Even David, when David came, he brought everybody back to God, you know, and, and the nation was worshiping God. Then Solomon, his son, comes on the scene, builds this wonderful temple, and then he marries foreign wives. And guess what? They, they drew his heart away from God. Then pretty soon, the people, the nations, they started falling away from God, and they started a new cycle, you know, and Israel and, and Judah got separated, and, and, you know, pretty soon, all the way to the exile, it was just up and down and up and down, uh, and, uh, you know, there was just this cycle that happened. They had an addiction to idols, and until this total abstinence from any foreigner occurred, they would still have this addiction to, to their, their uh, culture and their gods. Ezra and Nehemiah set a foundation that kept Israel from that idolatrous cycle for 400 years up to the time Jesus was born. You know, their strong allegiance to God's laws as one of the reasons they, was, was actually one of the reasons they, they crucified Jesus. He was crucified because he claimed to be God. You know, and they, they had God boxed in says, and, and, and worship to be this. They had it all planned out. And Jesus didn't fit, the, fit their mind. He fit the scriptures perfectly. But they interpreted the scriptures that Jesus was a blasphemer, claiming to be God. And so for that reason, they hung him up for their religion, for their following after God. They thought it, they were doing God a favor by crucifying Jesus. They, by, they thought they were doing God a favor by crucifying God. And too bad they didn't pay much attention to the prophets as they did to the law. And they maybe would have recognized Jesus as their Messiah. In Daniel 9, 26, it was all part of the plan though. 9, 26 through 27, we're going to look at 
that again. Get the Bible up in the app. Okay. So Daniel 9.26. I hope you're turning there as well. After 62 sevens, this is a very specific prophecy. The anointed one will be cut off and will have nothing. That happened 32 AD, exactly in line with this prophecy. The people of the ruler will come, and this is after he was cut off, will destroy the city and the sanctuary. That happened 70 AD, just like, just like this prophecy said. The end will continue and come like a flood. And we, we have that. We're, this, is our, this is our description of the world today. War will continue until the end and desolations have been decreed. Okay? This period, this time period, there is this, this gap. There is this, this valley that, that, that Daniel gives room for. And then at the end of this, the last seven, he will confirm it with a covenant with one with many for one seven, okay? So this is the last seven of the 70 weeks of Daniel. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to the sacrifice and the offering and on the wing of the temple, okay? Remember, the temple is destroyed before. Now all of a sudden, it, it's all of a sudden available in the middle of the seven. On the wing of the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Um, we, are, we are getting into this, Period. But but for now, we're going to look at the mystery, but we're going to get into this last seven and it's going to tie into Revelation and all that stuff and all the rest of Daniel. And I'm excited to get into this, but I'm also excited to get into this, uh, this last week. We're going to turn to Zechariah 12.10. That's going to be the next one we turn to. You know, the... The Jews, the leaders, they should have definitely recognized the anointed one after he was pierced. You know, this is where religion got in the way of their God. The disciples finally got it after, after Jesus' resurrection and Pentecost. The, they appointed the one, you know, Matthias, to take the place of Judas according to prophecy. Everything was falling into place. Boom. It was doing awesome. The next step was the recognition of the Jews of the anointed one. The one who was cut off, the one who was pierced, the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. I mean, you, you combine all these scriptures, the next phase of the Jewish, the Jewish thing is, is, you know, to get this system going was the recognition, the, the appearance of Jesus. Uh, I, I'm sure the disciples were dumbfounded when Israel continued to reject Christ after his resurrection. Okay, Zechariah. We're going to look at Zechariah 12, 10. Oops, cancel. Him whom they have pierced on Zechariah 12, 10. And I will pour out on the house of David, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, a spirit of grace and supplication. That's, this, is, this is David. This is the house of David. They will look on me. The one they have pierced. Who's this? This is Old Testament. Jesus is giving them a clue. This is what they're going to look at. And they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. On that day, the weeping in Jerusalem will be great, like the weeping of Hadad Rimon in the plain of Megiddo. The land will mourn each clan by itself with their wives by themselves and the clan of the house of David and their wives, the clan of the house of Nathan and their wives, the clan of the house of Levi and their wives, the clan of Shimei and their wives, and all the rest of the clans and their wives. They're going to mourn. And that's, 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 uh, that's where they were at. Um, we're going to turn to Matthew 10, 16. You know, I, I like the passage out of uh, 1 Corinthians 2.8. I'm just going to read this real quick. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Um, so there was a point in their blindness. Uh, Jesus needed to be crucified. 
And uh, we'll probably look at that passage next week as part of the, the sermon. But I just wanted to throw that in there real quick. Okay, Zechariah 12, 10. And he will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look at me as one they have pierced and they will mourn for him. So over and over again, the Bible, especially Jesus warns us not to be deceived. Okay. Even the religious elite who studied the scriptures were deceived. You know, I studied the scriptures. Could I be deceived? You know, they were blind to the one they had pierced. Could I be blind to something God wants, wants to show me? They didn't follow the, the progression of prophecy to get things rolling to bring in the kingdom. What am I not following the progression of? You know, I, I got to think about these things because so many times I box God in. I box in, you know, prophecy. I box in the laws. I box in grace. And, and, and I box out anything that can surprise me because I like control. I don't want that to be the, the, the rule for me and I don't want that to be the rule for you. That's why we pray that the Holy Spirit enlightens us. I, I, I have... Uh, um, I forget things. And sometimes I think it's a good thing because sometimes I forget the things that box God. And uh, so every time I look at scripture, I get surprised, you know, maybe I get surprised by the same thing that surprised me earlier. And I, I just forget, you know, um, <laughs> what do you call uh, uh, ignorance is bliss? Well, maybe uh, a little bit of uh, forgetfulness is bliss too. But the apostles continued to preach and the numbers were added daily to church. But as Jesus said, and there's, there's, there was a system, there was a program that they were following and uh, they were hoping uh, that would bring in Jesus. And, and it, wasn't, it wasn't pretty. There was a dark time that the disciples were going through. But during this dark time, even as they were seeing this, this nasty stuff going on according to their numbers, uh, they had this hope. They had this excitement. And even as we see some dark things happening in this world, we can get excited because God is up to something. God is moving. And, and it is prophetic. It's prophetic. And I hope you too get excited about, about all that God is, is doing in, in for you. So we're going to turn to Matthew 10. Matthew 10. about persecution. Okay, let me switch this back over to my Bible. And uh, and he starts out in, uh, in verse 16. I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when, you, when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death. A father, his child, children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth. You will not finish going through the cities of Israel. Okay, look at it. Through the cities of Israel. God had a plan for Israel before the Son of Man comes. So there was, there, was a, there was a program. The disciples were following this, this incredible program. And, and they were saying, oh man, this is exciting. This is, this is great. Uh, we can see what's going on. We're going to turn to Acts 7, 53 next. But, you know, it was happening. When would this kingdom come? This is exciting. This is a prophetic. When would the Son of Man come? When would the last seven commence? The disciples followed through with the plan waiting for the Jewish leaders to look on the one that they had pierced and mourn. 
They did not have the revelation of the mystery as they followed focusing on the Jews waiting for the recognition to happen. They, they wanted this program to happen in Israel. All of Israel was going to fall in line. Uh, even Jesus says this will happen in all the places of Jerusalem, all the cities of Jerusalem, waiting for them to look on the one they had pierced and mourn. Jesus' words were coming true. You know, Peter and John, they, they were sent to prison, not once, but twice. The second time, they, the, an angel let them out of prison and they went right straight to the temple and, and the, the, they went to look for Peter and John in the prison and they're like, what? No, oh, no, they're, they're gone. And then somebody says, well, they're in the temple preaching and they escaped. The angel let them out. But uh, so, so they were being persecuted. They were being uh, sent to prison by their, their friends, their, their relatives. And so everything was falling in place. Now comes along Stephen, this, this guy, and he was arrested for and being tried, okay? And this is out of Acts 7, 53. And, and Stephen's face was glowing like an angel, almost like, like Moses' was when, when he came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments, you know, and they had to put a veil on his face because it glowed. I'm sure Stephen's face was glowing. I mean, they, they should have recognized it. Man, this is supernatural. This is crazy. And uh, Stephen began a, a, a rebuttal. Um, and he began with the first Hebrew, Abraham. And he led them through to Moses and Solomon and the prophets. And he gets really in their faces. So we're going to look at uh, math, uh, Acts 7, 53. And uh, here we are. You have received the law that was put in effect through the angels but have not obeyed it, okay? So they, they received the law, but they've not obeyed it. And then it, we see the stoning of Stephen. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Okay, this is huge. This is huge. Jesus, the one they pierced, is in the clouds and Stephen could see them. The one they pierced. Oh, man. Zechariah, Zechariah, this is prophecy. Jesus, the one they pierced, the one, the one he prophesied is, is in the clouds. And so he, he follows through right on script. And in, in Acts 7, 56, he's, look, he said. The King James Version says, behold, he said, I see the heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. You know, look, look. There he is, the one who they pierced. You know, here he is in the clouds. Woohoo! You know, let's get this kingdom rolling. Let's start the chain reaction where Israel, the leaders, see the one they pierced and they start mourning. And then pretty soon, the house of David, the clan of this guy and the clan of this guy, and pretty soon all of Israel is mourning. All the clans are, 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 are swept up by the Messiah uh, as, as he cuts stands there in the clouds, and the kingdom is prophesied. Woohoo! You know, look! You know, Zechariah 12.10, we read that earlier. Um, let's, let's go back to it. Uh, and I will pour out on the house of David, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, a spirit of grace and supplication. Woo, this is going to happen. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. This is it. Look. There he is. You know, the Greek word for look here is, I'm, I'm going to go to, to the Greek on here, is uh, G. G1914. G1914. Okay. It's a plep. A peep. Leo, a peep, a peep, leepo, okay, it means to gaze at with favor, pity, or partiality, look upon, regard, have respect. It, it occurs only three times in the King James Version, okay? I'm sitting there going, whoa, three times. I didn't, didn't, didn't look at the, um, the one in Acts yet, but I said, man, wouldn't that be cool if one of the three times it was in the Old Testament, the King James Version, that, that it would be this time in Acts? But I looked at... Uh, looked at the one Stephen used, and it's related. I mean, it's look, behold, 
but uh, it's uh, G2400, G2400, Strong's number, and uh, basically second person singular, imperative middle voice, used as imperative, so lo, behold, see, uh, let's, I mean, exclamation point, big time, look, the words are similar, and I can imagine disciples, as uh, they're standing off in the distance, you know, I mean, they're, they're, I'm sure they're, they're watching their, their buddy Stephen. You know, he just went to court and they're pretty interested. What's going to happen to Stephen? What's going to happen to Stephen? And as, as Stephen is walking out, as they're rushing on, on Stephen, um, and Stephen says, look, and behold, I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there they're, they're probably looking at Stephen and looking up the, at, at, at Jesus in the clouds and looking at Stephen, you know, the cards, clouds are part and there's Jesus standing up there and they're saying, oh man, this is it. This is the time. This is the time when, when Jesus is going to come in the clouds. You know, Jesus, this is the time when, when the things are going to be set in motion. Israel is going to be, the Messiah is going to come. He's going to reign and rule. You know, there's going to be some trouble and stuff along the way, you know, because there's a tribulation of, of Daniel still coming. But it's it. This is it. They're going to go through this. Israel's, you know, of course, Rome's going to go attack Israel for, for whatever when the Messiah comes. But it's going to happen. It's going to roll out. And they're looking at these, these Sanhedrins, the leaders of the Jews, you know, and, uh, and, and Stephen saying, look, look, look. And, and uh, what are we thinking? What are we thinking? Are they going to look? Are they going to look? The disciples, are they going to mourn just like they said they would? And the disciples, I, I don't know, I just imagine them being so excited. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, read back at uh, Acts. This was, this was an exciting time. Um, Acts 7.56 is, Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears. And yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragging him out of the city, and they began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Remember the name, the man named Saul. He's pivotal. He's pivotal during this mystery. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Crazy, crazy, crazy. We're going to turn to Romans eleven thirteen. You know, they, they didn't look. They didn't look. They, they, they didn't behold. They covered their ears. They yelled at the top of their lungs and, and, and all rushed at Stephen and killed him. You know, this was a pit of there, there There's also that key man here participated in the event. His name was Saul. You know, he was a part of the support of the stoning for Stephen. He, was, he, he took on the role of persecuting Christians. He was also the writer of the first passage we read out of, out of Ephesians about the mystery. God had a mystery to reveal. And, and I believe that this is the decree that placed it in motion. This event, the Jews' rejection meant the, okay, we're going to go to... Uh, Romans eleven thirteen. Paul writes this as well. The same guy that, that was some support of the stoning of Stephen. Um, Paul writes this. I am talking to you Gentiles inasmuch that I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I make much of my ministry in hopes that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? Okay? God is not done with the Gentiles. I mean, with the Jews. He's not done with us either. But he's not done with the Jews. I mean, we didn't replace, this mystery didn't replace them. It just postponed God's plan. I don't know even if it had postponed. Maybe God's plan was had this all along. It just postponed it in the minds of the disciples, in the minds of, of, of this, you know, how we can do it. <laughs> uh, that Saul got another chance to the one that they had pierced. 
Um, when I was a when I was a kid, we had uh, we had family devotions, and our our favorite picture as a kid, and we we had this big huge Bible and had pictures. You know, I love pictures. I like pictures, and uh, our favorite picture when we were kids at the dinner table, we finished our dinner, and the dad would take out this big Bible. And uh, we'd go, hey, Paul Boom, Paul Boom, you know, and that basically meant uh, um, where, where Paul was. So Paul, Saul, the guy that, that, that was part of, partook in the stoning of Stephen, he gets visited by Christ. And guess what? He viewed and looked on the one he had pierced. Right? This is huge. This is huge. He saw the one who had pierced. Now, he was from the tribe of Benjamin, but, uh, but, but something happened with Saul, and he is the apostle to the Gentiles, just like the scripture that we just read. Out of Romans, Romans 11 and Acts. It, we'll, we'll get into Acts. Maybe, uh, I, I don't know, how much uh, we'll we'll get into it, but uh, because we're we're trying to go through Daniel, we're trying to go through prophecy. But I want to get enough of this mystery in here, just to so that there is a gap in between the 69th week of Daniel and the 70th week of Daniel. Um, this time Jesus got his attention, and it was very intense. It was an intense call. He wasn't called to the lost house of Israel. Thanks for the super art. He was called to bring the gospel directly to the Gentiles. The window of opportunity for the Jews to look at the one who they had pierced had expired temporarily. And now a new secret program was set in order. You know, God didn't replace prophecy with the secret program. It's just an unprophesied era, a dispensation, an administration until the unpause of the Jewish time clock of Daniel's last week, the last seven years, is set in motion again. And, and it's, it's reconciliation to the world. But it, and it's a great time. It's a wonderful time where, 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 where we have an experience of grace. The Holy Spirit indwells in us and makes us like Christ. It's a time of reconciliation to the world. But when the Jews, if you read more of Romans 11 and more of Romans and whatever... You'll, you'll see that God's program for the Jews, when it is established, it is going to be better. It's going to be life. Not just reconciliation, but life. The, God is not done with the Jews. They were not replaced. They were just set aside. And I want to close with Revelation where, where John reinstates Zechariah's prophecy for the Jews to look at the one they pierced. And uh, this is talking to to the um let me let me get this set up oh i got it i got it good okay so we're going to go to revelation 1 4 okay and i i love going through scripture because the scripture is so profound um all of scripture and i wish i could go through all of it with you today but there's so much scripture I'd, I, I, I'd be here for 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 years. Um, but tying this all in, greeting to the seven churches. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come. From the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. He has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. And I say amen. Look. There's that look. There's that look. I should look that up. I'm going to look that up real quick. We're going to look that up. Okay. It's the word behold. It's two. It's the same word Stephen. It's the same word Stephen used. Okay, I just I just got this. Okay, this is huge. The same word Stephen used. G two four four. 
okay? Singular, second person, imperative, middle voice, used as imperative, L-O, behold, lo, see. Ha <laughs> ha. Behold, he comes in the clouds. I, I love this. I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go to the new, new, new living word. Look, okay, look. He comes with the clouds of heaven and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the nations of the world will mourn for him. Yes, amen. I, I don't know about you, but I got chills right now. I, 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 didn't, I didn't connect. I didn't tie this in till just now. It was crazy. Yes, amen. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. This is Jesus speaking. Says the Lord God, I am the one who is, who always was, and who still is still to come, the Almighty One. Oh, this is crazy. I, 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 I just want to encourage you with God's word. It is awesome. Um, I don't want to miss out on anything that is God has planned by putting God in some understandable box that if he does something out of that box, I'm looking at Stephen. I'm yelling at the top of my lungs. I'm plugging my ears because it doesn't fit my, my idea of what God is and it doesn't fit the program of what God does. God has some surprises in scripture and I know he still does. Let's just take this time and, and, uh, and, and pray. Lord God, you amaze me. And I pray that you amaze everybody here. Lord, you surprise me with your mystery. You totally unbox yourself every time we box you in. Lord, help us to keep our eyes open for your surprises. Lord, help us to be diligent in scripture and to see all of scripture put together that point to you, the crucified one, the risen one, the one that is coming as the Messiah and the one who lives in us. Lord, as we go our week, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's crazy. There's losses, there's uh, sicknesses, there's, there's sufferings, there's persecution. But I, Lord, Lord, I pray that the hope that we have in you and the hope that we have in the eternal that goes beyond the veil of this temporary, this physical, is real. And that we can take that and pursue that with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we have another song. How great thou art.